This bomb will go off in 10 seconds. You're listening to the Pipe Bomb Podcast with James, Nick, Gigi, Josh, Sam, and Tom. Ring the bell. One. My birthday. I'm going to try to get some happy birthdays from the Divas tomorrow. So oh don't my God. Are you going to be begging for birthday love? Begging for birthday love, especially from Sasha, girl. I'd be like, Sasha, <laughs> we share our same birthday. You fucking retweeted me a couple times. Just wish me a happy birthday. Please say it. <laughs> All right, let's get this going. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Pipe Bomb Podcast. I am Nick, and today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by two fabulous hotties. Um, first, come on out, Sammy. Sammy, are you there? Hi, you all right? I'm yeah, here. All right. How you doing, mm-hmm. though? Uh, I'm all right. I'm just, uh, just in bed with me. Nice cup of coffee. Oh, I thought you would still be in the tub. No, I got out um, just about ten minutes ago. <laughs> oh, you're, pro- you're probably all pruny by now. <laughs> I, w- I, will re- I read a book when I'm in the bath, and I got a bit lost in the book this time. Oh, God. Girl, that's dangerous. You could drop yeah. your book in there. I know. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are also joined by James. How are you doing, James? Hello, 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 hello. I hope the listeners love the new digs. You guys like it? Is you it like y'all? the new look, y'all? Y'all like it? It's great. <laughs> we got our weaves did. Yes. Yeah, we are did and done, y'all. We look fabulous. We went, uh, to, we went to the salon with Naomi. Got a little blue. Got a little blue. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys like it. We have to freshen it up a bit, you know? It's been a year. We, we've been exactly. doing Exactly. It's 2016. It was new about year, time. New me. The, yeah, new TPP, y'all. So mm-hmm. we've got a lot of things in store for you. Um, as you guys seen earlier this week, we had the Hanaya interview with promo that will be leading up. So yes. a lot of you didn't know that we landed an interview with Hanaya. So we're so yeah. excited. You know so what? excited. You know what? We're going to play the Hanaya trailer right now, just for the hell of it. Coming soon the podcast. Beautiful. By the way, can like I just want to thank you, James. Like your editing on that was like fabulous. Uh, it was fun making it, and I mm-hmm. I want to do more. Every time we we land an interview, you remember before when we had the idea of doing like a hot pick of the week or TPP pick of the week? I think I'm gonna do them for when we land an interview, just to give like the listeners, especially the indie girls, to give them a little background on who we're getting onto the show, so they can get a little taste of who they are. So that's why when you came up with the idea for Hanaya and Nick, I just took it and ran with it. So, yeah, and I really like that idea. So I think we're gonna stick to it every time we have an interview. So and I hear it's just the first of many. Yes, just to let watch you guys know. this space. And you know what? One of our listeners made a cool little fun fact. He said, "I don't know who it was. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I'm so sorry, but I know he." It was maybe been... either Isaac Gore or Nick, like Fearless Nick. I don't know because I, I, I know which comment you're talking about. Yeah, they said something about how everybody. All the the two divas that we've had on our show lately, um, which was Chelsea Green and Daria, they've both been signed, one with TNA, the other one with WWE. So I was like, that's a fun little fact. I didn't even realize that. And we like, had Alex as well, but he didn't get signed. But he's having a great time at um, Blackstone. As I talk to him regularly. Really? Oh, yeah, we're, we're friends. Yeah. We and friends. Then, did we ever tell the listeners that we had Gigi, but oh my I don't God. know. I don't we want to get Tom to explain that, but then I don't I think you he know got what? I'm gonna it. explain it. <laughs> let's let's what? give the listeners some tea you've yes. been waiting for. It Listen, for all right, listeners, we've been together for a year now, so I feel like we're real close. So I'm gonna give you guys t- the tea. We landed Gigi. Um, from Tough Enough. She was one of the popular ones from last season of Tough Enough. She didn't make it on From Australia. Our, yeah, from Australia. She didn't make it onto our podcast, which means why she's kind of irrelevant right now. No shade. No shade. Oh, shade. But it's true. She didn't get signed, so maybe she, it's an omen. It Maybe. You should have came over here, girl, because we had the NXT people all on <laughs> our ears, and they were all listening to our shit. But anyways, <laughs> I digress. We landed the interview with her, so a lot of scheduling issues happened. So I guess... I don't even remember the whole story, but and to make a long story short, Tom made some decisions without addressing the crew that led to um, 
the whole Gigi thing falling off. So it, I believe we got a transcript interview with Gigi, but we don't do transcripts. So we kind of just scrapped her interview. So that's mm-hmm. what happened with the whole Gigi thing. So you guys, I know, I know a lot of the <laughs> listeners were wondering about that, yeah. and we did mention that we did score the EG or the EG, the Gigi interview. So it was kind of shitty how it all kind of, kind of like went out, but yeah. Regardless, but I mean, that guy's, does kind of make sense. She's kind of irrelevant now because, I mean, she didn't get that TPP interview. So. Yeah, hey, sorry, Gigi. And we could have had Mandy if she wasn't so bitter. Oh, we didn't if want she Mandy. wasn't so bitter with me. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I didn't want to talk to her, and I still don't want to talk to her, personally, because there's nothing for me to say to her. Nothing. What am I going to say to her? You were a bitch on Tough Enough, huh? Like, what else <laughs> do I got to say? <laughs> nothing. It would have been interesting to ask her some of the aspects of, like, talking to all of those legends and stuff, though, and then scoring this Total Diva stuff, but, like... Well, mm, she didn't have Total Divas at the time. She was just an epic bitch on that TV show. And And she, to be honest, she wasn't even really that bitchy. Like, I've seen bitchier girls, you know, so she wasn't, like, she wasn't the diamond in the rough when it came to bitches, so... I feel Um, like she caused a lot of trouble. But anyways, let's get, let's get on with the show. Let's get it cracking. Let's get it cracking. So, Nick... Forget that house. Nick, steer the wheel. <laughs> oh, steer that wheel out of the shade. Um, Sam, let's talk about what's been going on last night, the Royal Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, it amazing. was lit. It was lit last night. It was so good. I um, I had to stay up till like four in the morning to watch it because it kind of sucks being in the UK when it's a good promo, like a good pay per view like that. We have to no, stay up all night. But luckily, I booked the week off work mainly because. The Rumble. Um, but yeah, it was a great, great pay-per-view overall. A lot of the online people seem to not be enjoying it as much as we clearly did, because we loved it. I can guarantee that we we were all... That, that bloody studio, like our little chat room studio, was absolutely popping with all of us just going off one-on-one. Um, do we kind of want to run through the matches slightly? Please. Do we want to talk about the pre-show? No. No. All I want to say is that the crowd loves Sando. It doesn't matter. But that's about it. And then one, had, comment, well, one comment I want to make is I thought the Dudley boys were shoe-ins for that. But right? they didn't win. That was so, why the hell did Mark Henry and Jack Swagger win? For they, were my, they were my pick to win, though, and they did. Just what? throw that out there. Did that you was, they were my dad's pick, too, and they won. I was like, what the hell? But for <laughs> what? Why? Why? Because they're both former champions. I think it felt right for them to be in the Rumble. As for Damien Sandow and Darren Young, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, you just say Darian Sando. <laughs> Damien. And no, Darian. for Darren. <laughs> oh. That was such a Nick weird You called word. him Darian Sando. <laughs> That's awful. Uh, Nick, I'm with you. I thought the Dudley boys were going to win. I really thought they were going to win, especially since Bubba was in there last year. I was like, well, it was kind of appropriate to have both of them. But You know what? Honestly, I said this before on the show, and I'm going to say it again. I just want them to disband the Dudley boys and send Devon down to NXT and help out these people, train them, whatever, because there's still a job for him in the WWE. And I want Bubba Ray to go on with his Bully Ray character in WWE. WWE has these chains on him, and they keep holding him back. This whole Dudley boy thing, that's Attitude Era. Let it go. Let it go. Ain't nobody Here, really feeling here's it. the thing. They need to have their 10th tag team title reign before they break up. Because I, I do agree with you. That. But then one thing scares me with this whole Bully Ray singles run, if they push him, somehow fucking Velvet Sky is going to leach herself I onto doubt them. It. She, WWE ain't going to pick her up. They, they, she's no. too washed up. No shade. But she, she, <clears throat> No shade. Shade included. She, she's just... No. Her time is gone. She missed her chance. She missed the boat. No. We, they would have picked her up when she was popping. She ain't popping now. So, bye. Mm. So moving on. Yeah. <laughs> um, we then kicked off with Owens against Ambrose. Yes. Dean? Well, Ambrose for. Uh, Kevin Owens against Dean Ambrose um, for the Intercontinental title in the last man standing match, which I must admit, apart from the Rumble itself, it's the, the best match of the night. Yes. I Absolutely give... flawless. It was so fun. I, give like, I wasn't stars. looking forward to this match going into it because like, I'm really? not a huge fan of either of them i like them i appreciate how good they are Mm -hmm. but it wasn't really like looking forward to it but i could not take my eyes off the screen you know kevin owens is a storyteller he is he just gets this business he knows how to be a heel 
and he's just so super over. You know what? Later on in the night when he was in the Royal Rumble, like I felt like everybody was coming at him. Like everybody wanted a piece of Owens. Like Owens is he just commands attention. And when he was in that ring with Dean Ambrose, you guys know how I feel about Dean Ambrose. I'm not gonna drag him because I feel like he performed very well. But then mm-hmm. again, he went on with those crazy, stupid face facial expressions that I just can't stand. And uh, <laughs> the stuff that he does in the ring that doesn't make sense. But the finish of the match was such a surprise to me. Because I forgot that Owen set up the table in the corner. I, I loved the, the placement of the table on the corner so it was off the camera frame. So you, you'd you watch the match and you'd forget that he set up those tables. So when yeah. he was climbing up the turnbuckle, when Dean ran up and just shoved them off and the way that he flipped over and sold it, money. That was a money shot. I loved yeah. this match. It was storytelling. And um, I... I <clears throat> I wish Kevin Owens won, but that's just me being biased because I love Owens as champion and he's a prize fighter. And um, Dean Ambrose doesn't do much for me, but I guess he needed this win to try to put him over even more with the crazy people that like him. But uh, regardless, I love the match. What do you think about it? I mean, I really, I really like this match. Um, Their chemistry together is really good. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Dean Ambrose as well. I don't drag him as much as you do. But, like, regardless, I feel like he needed this win to elevate his Mm -hmm. title reign, like you mentioned earlier. But I love Kevin Owens. He's probably, like, him and Kalisto are probably my two favorite wrestlers on the main roster right now. Like, especially, I love how you mentioned Kevin Owens is such a storyteller in that ring. Because, like, his in-ring commentary makes me laugh every single time he's I so you. <laughs> he, he's so athletic in the ring and like for a man his size for a man his size you wouldn't think it but like he's so good so like i'm i'm really excited to see more with him and i'll get into him a bit more when we get to the rumble but the yeah. match itself the spots were just insane yeah. like i love the table spots um the chairs. God, I can't even, the chairs oh my gosh the, the chairs. chairs are amazing i love how um they both got up out of their finishers as well i thought I thought um, Kevin Owens was done after the second um, dirty deeds, uh, dirty deeds on the on the chair. I was like, oh damn, goodbye. What about when yeah, um, got out. when Dean so, threw the chair at him when he was sitting on the turnbuckle and it got caught around his neck? And I loved how Kevin Owens like if you paid attention, you watched Kevin Owens call the spot because it accidentally went around his neck. So he came down. He was like, punch me, punch me, punch me. Yeah, yeah, so I seen the, that. Yeah, that's when Dean started like punching him. I'm like, Dean, you couldn't even think of. It's like obviously that's what he's doing coming down towards you like that. I was like, punch him, but Dean Ambrose is not so bright. That's why he's not my favorite. Like I see, maybe that's me. <laughs> Picking with Dean Ambrose, but maybe I I, I like Dean. Am- I like the cat. I like the lunatic French name. I love that name. I just don't like that he doesn't embody the lunatic French. I guess that's I think my if he issue. was a heel, it would be better. Yeah, absolutely. If yeah. he was a heel, I would love Dean Ambrose. And I you know, like I just want to make face. a brief mention, um, like you mentioned with Kevin Owens, how Dean Ambrose didn't really pick up on that. I feel like Kevin Owens is more innovative in yeah. that ring. And like when it comes to spots and and Close moments where those. yeah, where it just he goes off the cuff, and I think that's just a lot due to his indie style of wrestling for so many yeah. years, like just yeah. off the fly working with guys. So I, I was just really it was such a good match to open the rumble and really kind of set the tone for the rest of oh, the yeah. interview. Awesome! Match. Oh yeah, so good. I love like there was a bit when I don't even know what the move was. It's some sort of like I don't know power bomb kind of thing off the corner, and Dean went through the table. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, he did that to Cena in the past before. It's oh, but it was cool. incredible. That was sick. I thought that was the end of the match. So Me that, too. Because, like, because you forgot about the two tables in the corner. Yeah. But like when they set it up, I was going. I was saying because I was watching with my friend. And I was like, whoever goes through that is losing, and I forgot that it was there. Yeah, me too. See, I thought the same thing. But they did a, like, whoever put that match together, I don't know if it was Kevin, Nadine, or the producers, whoever, they did a a fabulous job. And it was, it was just the perfect match to opening up that such a big pay-per-view like that and really get the fans hot and ready for more. So Mm -hmm. it was just, they, they just killed it. They killed it. Period. All agreeing match of the night. I don't know. This was this was a damn. You know what? This is a good problem to have because I cannot pick a match of the night. Everybody, I know. I'm having a hard time. Everybody was, was on mine. point. Everybody was on point. Maybe I'll pick my match of the night after we finish up because right now I just can't. I got to reminisce. I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then after that we had, uh, well, we didn't. It wasn't really a match straight away. It was the funeral kind of thing of Francesca. <laughs> just want to uh, bow our heads for a moment, Francesca. 
Poor Francesca. It's a brief moment. But then they brought out Francesca too, and then we had the tag team match. I thought the Usos were hated by that crowd. Of course. It was crazy. I loved how they were, the crowd were going in, play Francesca. <laughs> 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 and Xavier Woods was like, no, you don't tell me when to play. I like how he teased them at first, like he was going to go play Francesca too. Yeah. Francesca too. And then he was like, no, I'll play what I want. But you know what? Speaking of the Usos getting booed, I kind of feel bad for them getting booed because it's kind of not their fault because one of them was injured for the, the amount of last year and that's when New, year, New Day really got over um, due to the absence of the Uso brothers. So now with them coming back when the New Day is so beloved by the universe, of course they're going to get booed. WWE just needs to be a little more smarter in their booking and try to transitions the Usos, the Usos into something else instead of just the, the generic brother tag team. Like, yeah. they don't do anything. They don't even let them, like, really, like, free range on the mic. Nothing. So, the only tag team that actually gets the mic in the division is the New Day right now. So. Also, I want to make, make mention of the Orlando crowd as well, because they were hyped throughout the entire night and really made this pay-per-view feel yeah. better. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of I, NXT, I really liked it. It's because a lot of the NXT um, audience that go to all the NXT shows, that you know how they travel locally, they were all there. That's why we heard of the, all the, eh, we want some new day, the baby yeah. chant. That's why we kept hearing stuff like that, because it's a lot of the people that go to those territories of the NXT shows that were there at that venue. So they made the pay-per-view even more fun. So. The crowd was so fun. I looked up. Yeah, but it was a good match. It wasn't the best match of the night. I would definitely not say it was the best match of the night, but it was it was definitely a good match. It was it a was solid a toilet break match. I won't it lie. was a solid match. I went outside for a smoke, but I watched like brief moments and when I came in, I definitely liked the finish where yes. the camera the camera work was really good and on point at the rumble because you didn't see Big E come in when he was going off the top rope and he caught him for the big ending. So I, I like that aspect. And I just want to make one quick mention of Xavier. I loved that little tornado DDT yeah. that he did. Um, oh, off the barricade. Off the that barricade. Was incredible. Like, oh, look at my boo, Xavier. Like, there you go. I was just going to mention that, too. That was awesome. And by the way, speaking of Xavier, he had an interview with Y2J this week on Talk is Jericho. Awesome interview. I suggest um, New Day fans that you guys go on to Talk is Jericho and go listen to it. And another Talk is Jericho thing that I want to tell you guys about is Freddie Prince Jr. I've been telling these guys on the podcast to go listen to the Freddie Prince Jr. interview on Talk is Jericho, but it's like talking to dry paint because nobody's listened to it and you guys <laughs> don't understand what you're missing out. I'm I will, telling. calm down. I am not Girl, gonna, I've been busy. I can only lead you to water. I can't make you drink. And trust me, it <laughs> is good. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's so good. <laughs> it's so good, you guys. I promise. I promise the listeners. Guys, I vouch for this interview. I know that he's not a wrestler, but listen, he is a writer. And he's a very smart writer. And he has so many good stories about Vince McMahon. Let me think of one. Let me give an example because there were so many good ones. Um, oh, gee. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, there was one with Vince McMahon. He was talking about Vince McMahon's promo classes, right? And he's saying that Vince McMahon pulled up, I believe it was Seamus. And King Barrett. And then he's like, I want... He, and then he does the Vince McMahon voice so perfectly. He's like, I want one of you two. To, he goes, you're a dog and, and you're a can. Now cut me a promo. And Seamus goes, grrr. And he goes, you don't fucking growl. And I was like, Oh. <laughs> and he's like, how are you going to fucking growl on TV? And then Freddie Pursuit is like, you told him to be a dog, Vince. And he's like, I'm, he's like, you're not going to fucking growl on TV. Like, you have to listen to it. It is so funny. The backstage stories with Vince McMahon. He also told a story about his direction for karma, how he wanted karma to end up. He talked oh, about wow. yeah, and like so many good things. He talked about his Jeff Hardy storyline, the Undertaker storyline, how he got Jeff Hardy to become the champion, how he wanted to work with CM punk but they wouldn't let him work with cm punk so it's it's just really really good and i suggest you guys go listen to it it's great and if you listen to it tweet me about it please <coughs> and it doesn't hurt that he's hot as hell oh how long God. is it it's like the regular length of maybe like 50 50 minutes it's really good he also talks about his dad hollywood why he quit hollywood and decided to go into wrestling and he talked about how the wrestlers didn't like him like the miz gave him shade like he's like oh you ain't brad pitt and he was like yeah you're damn right i ain't brad pitt but brad pitt ain't here i'm here to teach you like you put miz together so like this is just <laughs> everybody put Miz together <laughs> it's just good but and then he did say that miz was one of his best students. <laughs> 
he gave Miz good shout out. He's like Miz was one of his best students out of everybody in that promo class. So and I believe it. Look at the Miz. Miz is fucking awesome on that mic. Oh my oh, god, he was amazing. So I just go listen to it, please. I could go on all day about. How all I'm right, doing. I'll listen to it. You put it over. Oh, I will listen to it. Calm down. <sighs> I'm exhausted now. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> do you want to have a breath? Do, do you, you want to okay? have a pop? A minute, and we'll move on to the next match. <laughs> yes, please go on, Dalit. All right, girl. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> okay, so United States title? Yeah. 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 Del Rio and Kalisto. Uh, I'm just so happy. I just want to make brief mention. Kalisto is champion again. And it's like, I like the I like the match. Uh, this was another one of my smoke breaks, but it came in towards the end of it. And yeah, there's a lot of near falls, near finishes. So I was happy with it. It was so good. I just, ho- I just hope he holds on to that title at least till Mania. Uh, we can only hope. Yeah. I feel like if you don't understand the, the Lucha Libre style, you won't get it. Like, you right. don't understand Kalisto's thing. Because, like, I was watching my friend's team going, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I was like, that's just kind of how, how it's done for them. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm right. sorry. What did he understand? He was like, I don't understand how that's effective. What's effective? Oh, okay. it's Any of his movesets. Oh, because he's, like, springboardy. And yeah, like... yeah. And he's like, I just don't get it. And I was like, high it's flyer. just the Mexican style. You just can't like, well, be okay high, with he's it. He's a high flyer. And yeah, I exactly. Like, he's small, and, and he he incorporates his speed with his um his um defense. So yeah, I, I was a, it was a real shame about the the slight botched move. What was that? Oh, which part? Was it, was it? I think it's towards the end. He like Kalisto was on the offense for something. Went for I I, I think it was like do you remember Molina's um sunset flip thing. Mm-hmm. It was a bit like one of those, but he sort of landed on his head. Oh, oh. St- but then still went for the pin on Del Rio. I didn't see it. Well, I like I like the, how I seriously he... watch it back because it looks so painful. I got. I'm, I'm definitely going to rewatch the pay per view probably this mm-hmm. weekend. But I, I liked how he hit the two. Um, I can never pronounce his finisher. Solius del Sol. Soli del Sol. Yeah. Solito del Sol. Oh, I don't know. See, we can't even do. I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna need him to change the name. Because it's so hard to pronounce. It needs to be easy, Kalisto. It got to roll off our tongues. So, Come on, Kalisto. Yeah, that, that's my only thing with him. But other than that, the match was great. I, I love the near Salida post. del Sol. Salida. 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 All right. All right, that's not so bad. Salida del Sol. That's not, ta- that's oh, not, not bad. bad. Yeah, it's not that bad to say. But um, I love how um, Del Rio was so aggressive trying to rip off his mask mid-match and stuff like he's that. He's so mean with Lil' Kalisto in his mask. I, like, I love how he's such a bully. But with um, him dropping this title, I hope there's a new direction for Del Rio's. And I really hope that this League of Nations expand because I really need my Rusev and Lana back kicking ass together. Yes. And uh, do whatever you want with Wade Barrett. I really don't care for Wade Barrett. never have. Um and Sheamus. Sheamus is basically just off the wasteland now. Like to be honest, I would rather them just pair Sheamus and Bear yeah. together as a tag team and just leave them in the tag division and have the other guys kind of separate, do their own thing. I agree. Totally agree. But yeah, what's the other match? Uh, or any other comments about Kalisto Alberto? I'm just glad that he's champ. That's good. It's yeah, different. it's Me not too. many matches. I even, it was a good match. It was okay. I, I just, enjoyed it. I can't wait to see who else he feuds with after the whole... Um, I hope it's Neville. I hope Neville gets a heel turn. Yes! That yes. would be a great feud. I have them feuding for my Cruiserweight title in my universe mode. But... Oh, really? Ooh. You have a Cruiserweight title? Oh, yeah. What if, you, what if you took away? Oh, you put it in NXT? Yeah. Uh, okay, I don't have anything in my NXT one. I just have the title, the tag, and the, the women's. I don't have like a middle one. Yeah, I had, like, a television title for a bit, and then I took that out, and then I put a cruiserweight belt in, and then I had the cruiserweight belt on SmackDown for a bit, and took away the United States belt, but anyway. My Diva's um, currently the longest reigning Divas champion. She's at 100 weeks. Who? Is this My Diva. Evelyn? Elena. Elena. Evelyn. <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> Imagine I, some Diva named Evelyn. That would be a nice <laughs> name for a Diva, Evelyn. Evelyn Powell. <laughs> I hate last mm-hmm. names. I don't want my wrestler to have a last name. They gotta See, be like I Madonna. like last names with divas. I don't. I hate it. The only Trish, one that, you know, Trish Stratus. Hello. Just the game let you have just one name though. Trish Stratus. No, her name in the, her it's Elena Brooklyn, in the yeah. game because I've always that's say Brooklyn. That's why I thought it was Evelyn because it's oh yeah Elena, the Lynn. So that makes sense. All right, I got you. 
There we go. I'm, I just wanted to cover my back on that one. Well, speaking <laughs> of Divas, I believe we had a Divas title match at the Royal Rumble. We did. Uh, Becky one of the greatest. Charlotte. Ooh. Well, on the reviews, everyone's saying that's the worst match of the night. People are so excuse, stupid. Excuse you. Stuff like I know, that I know, not me. Wrong. Just saying. You, you know, these listeners, they, not, not the listeners, because we know we have some smart listeners over We here. got beautiful listeners. We're talking about those other listeners. The, yeah, the, <laughs> listeners, they, the listeners that listen to our show, clearly they're smart. They got they know what the hell's going on. <laughs> but when it comes to some of these people that are on Twitter, like, they complain about every fucking thing. This is the first Divas match that I could recall in a long time that actually had a good ass storyline the last divas match that i remember that had like a an in-depth deep storyline that was like that i was emotionally involved with was probably dawn marie and tori wilson when dawn when dawn marie was messing around with al wilson and it was so personal (laughs) this storyline even though they're doing this in the pg version it's so deep. Like, this is my best friend. We caught up together down at NXT. We trained together. We got brought up to the main roster together. She became Divas Champion, and I supported her, and bam, she stabbed me in the back. Like, Well, you say it's the PG era, but then there was a complaint go apparently on. put in about the kiss. All right, p- kisses are not PG. Apparently, that's what the kickoff was like, about. Sexual I, harassment. That's so oh, It gets me so mad. I could just I flip was this so, table. If I can find the link for the story, I'll, I'll show it Fuck to you. Fuck that story. Disgusting. I don't even want to see the story. That's Fuck frustrating the story. because they used women in the opposite role in the past to distract men and to yeah. kiss them and to do exactly. AJ Lee. AJ Lee did it all the fucking time. They had Brie me? Bella. They had Brie Bella kiss Nick, um, AJ Lee too for her to lose the belt. Like, come on. Like Exactly. What had- a joke. I thought that added... So much more to the match. So much. It gave it gave like the crowd reaction was amazing to that. And Becky slapping him and then like Charlotte didn't even give her a second afterwards before she just knocked the bitch yeah. down. She's like, don't oh, you dare yeah. touch my father. See? Like you see what I mean? Nick, thank you for bringing how quickly Charlotte attacked it. Just the reaction from Charlotte and and from look that whole little hot spot is what ignited the internet. Cause it was just like, oh a kiss, oh a smack, oh here comes Charlotte to defend her dad. It was just like it looked real. It was a world star hip hop moment. Like yeah. she was, it like, was good. It was good. Like don't fucking touch my dad. It was bitch. some serious Tiffany Pollard New York. <laughs> and it's funny too because Becky's like, don't you fucking kiss me. Yeah. <laughs> She's I like, are it. you kidding me? Oh, it it was, like, the worst part about Becky was Becky's poor shoe. Oh, uh, her leg. The whole oh, oh, so ear. She's so tr- she tried to take it off and it just wasn't working. No, she, Even commentary is like, is Becky's footwear going to cost <laughs> her this match? <laughs> I, I like that they tied that in. Because I was just like, she, she should have just took off the whole gear. The gear is hideous. And oh, you don't like her gear? I hate her gear. I hate it. Her best gear, I like it normally, but not that one. That was I hate that one. gear. I hate the color. I hated that yellow shit in her hair. Oh, I didn't like the yellow. I didn't mind the gear, though. I thought it was kind of, like, cute. I hate it. The corset's too big. It makes her look shaped like Spongebob. Like, I don't like oh. it. Oh, Becky no, girl. and you know, Becky's a hot bitch. Like, don't get me wrong. Becky got it going on. She is hot. I just want... Remember her match with... Her takeover match with Sasha Banks? That was my favorite gear of Becky Lynch. I want her to get it more tight. Like, if you're going to wear... Was that the white and red? No, the one that she had the black when she first debuted the whole steampunk look. I, I loved it with the maroon. Oh, yeah. <coughs> in the stroke. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, girl. Pop another oh, one. Hold yeah. on. Let me take a sip. Okay. Go get a boy. You'll be okay. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. That was gross. Um, no, I, huh? I, I just feel like Becky really needs to sit down with Miss Sandra or somebody and come up with something. I, I like where she's going, but I, I want it to be more fitted, more um, cohesive. Because it looks like it's a piece from here, tank top from here, and this is from there. And that. I, I, like can, I agree with that. Um, she's got a lot of... It's like, I, I do appreciate how she switches it up all the time, yeah. but I feel like she's just trying to find the distinct outfit that she wants. Yeah, and then in her defense, she was plucked from NXT quick. You know, she didn't yeah. have her time to blossom like the other girls did to find their looks. So I understand she's finding her look on the main roster. So right. that, that's why I don't give her too much crap for it, but I don't really like her I, I See, I like that shade of blue on her, though. I thought that looked great. Maybe, like, I do can, I, I can see the comparison with, like, it being a little bulky and not tightly fitted, the mm-hmm. corset piece, and the leggings were a mess and, like, just not fitted well. But what do you think of the color? Did you not like that on her, or...? I didn't like the color. I thought the color uh-huh. was just so wrong, especially with the hair like that as well. It, it, mm. just, it didn't make any damn sense to me. 
I didn't like it. If anything, that's what I feel like the fans should be talking about, is how much they hated her gear, not how they hated the storyline. It's like, really? The storyline is flawless. There's nothing wrong with the storyline. You got two divas that can (laughs) actually... They can hold the mic. Both divas can hold the mic. They've been telling this story for weeks now. Both divas can wrestle. Both divas can tell a story in the ring. And they got Ric fucking Flair sitting on the outside of the ring, throwing his sports jacket over Becky Lynch's head. That was (laughs) everything to me. When he did that, I was I was like yes, like I was like bouncing off up the couch because you guys know I love me, my Ric Flair and I love Charlotte. I'm the Flair. I'm all with the Flares, and I was just so happy to watch them cheat and win and still be champions. I just I love the storyline. So if you got a problem with this storyline, girl, good fucking bye. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I just want to make another mention. Charlotte looked beautiful. She I did. loved her outfit together. Like, she is always together at these pay-per-views. Like, she has, like, with the gems on the side of her face, mm-hmm. hairs on fleek. Like, um, but I really liked how she added kind of that metallic piecing with her attire. Like, it was more of kind of the lacy aspect. But now she has the metallic in the back and in the shorts. And it just looks so good. Like, I really like the purple on her. She looked hot. Definitely. Looked like she a champion. Good. She, oh, she, best yeah. best gear I've seen. Yeah, I was just gonna say that because I hate the one that says "woo" over the top of it. I don't like. That yeah, one. I don't like the woo. I really hate that one. Or the woo over the crotch. I'm the like, pink? oh, oh no, it's like the do it with flair one. It's like do it on the yeah. front and then the back says flair. Oh. I'm like, oh girl, like get do it off your crotch. Because you know what the woo thing remind like, like those ones that say like woo on the top and on like the pants. It makes me think of The Sims. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Like when they go for a woohoo. She's looked oh the my best. God. She's looked the best she's ever looked last night. I think that's she the She looked best. incredible. The best gear I've seen Charlotte in. My girl just slays. She is the champion. And I love how she carries herself like the champion. She's so pompous. Like even after when she won the match, she was like flickering her hands, kinda like a little bit like May Reese does. Yeah. Like her, her own little way, like, oh really, I just had to do all of this just to beat this bitch. Like I love how she's <laughs> she's always over it. And that's 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 what I love about her character. Like she's she's she looks at Becky like Becky is so small and like she's not a flare. Like she this girl doesn't even compare to me she's not on her level yeah and i love that and and becky like embraces that and then how when flair came into the ring and she's like oh about time like she gave her that attitude she's like about time and then she looks at at becky down on the floor she walks over and just starts beating her down again gave her a good it was crazy that's like she started beating down and then you hear (laughs) 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 and the crowd lifted yo that was incredible Have you seen a crowd pop for a diva like that? Never. I haven't seen a pop like that since, like, AJ in the beginning days. Like, Not even. I don't even mm. think AJ's got a pop crowd. like that. That was that was a big pop. She got one of the loudest pops in the night. She got a AJ. Brock Lesnar like, pop. No bullshit. That crowd, go back and listen to that. She got a Brock Lesnar pop. That crowd lit up when Sasha uh-huh. she she like you could even tell like in her face like she cracked a smile because she was just like oh my god like people she's like, like damn girl people <laughs> miss I think she was like surprised like damn they missed me like that hell yeah Sasha we missed you I was like hell yeah she came out in pink she, she's like, been yeah. gone like what a month and then I've been surprised reaction <laughs> poor Nick the next girl but Nick how did you feel about Sasha let's let's talk through Sasha Oh my Sasha gosh, yes. I, before I talk about Sasha, I just want to make one more brief mention about Charlotte, since you're oh. talking about her character. I'm really loving um, the development of her heel character yes. now with Rick and how she's just completely transformed herself. And, and the little video package before the match really oh, established yeah. that, right? And she's like, you know, Becky's a sweet girl. We grew up together. But like, sh- like she's trying to act like the victim? Like, I'm the victim. Like, she's so in her head right now and in the flair champion mentality that she's not caring about anybody else. So I really like that. And even during the match herself, her mannerisms, when Becky kicked out of the first um, spear, like her covering her face and just looking so shocked. And then after drop kicking flair and she's like almost lost the title. And then at the end where she's kind of like, Oh, finally beat this bitch. She's like got this look of disgust on her face. And then when they pass the title to her, she's like, ah, like a big smile. It's like, it just really felt natural and organic. Organic. Mm-hmm. I really yes. Good way to um, put it. Like it felt organic with Charlotte. It really does. I love that you said that about her because that's how it, everything that she does feels so organic to me. Like, of yes. course, she's a flair. Duh. No shit. Hello. You know. And I, I just love that she embraces it all. 
I, I think both girls did phenomenal. Like, I don't know why people are kind of bitching about the flair moment with the kiss. It's added in more to this match. Yeah. It makes it stand out, to be honest. Um, but the move sets, both these girls were on point. They know each other, the chemistry between each other. So I was expecting a great match, but, like, this was just awesome. I like the near falls, the near decisions. But let's get to Sasha. I wasn't expecting Sasha to come out until the beatdown. I was thinking, like, okay, who's going to come out to help? I was thinking maybe Natty to set something up for fast lane, or I don't know. Mm-hmm. Paige even, who who knows. But then when Sasha came down, like the crowd erupted the hair on fleek. She just looked amazing. And I was kind of interested to see what she's gonna do. And she just like shoves Becky out of the ring. She's like, my spotlight, Becky. And like the cute little um BFF handshake. And then once she got Ric Flair out of the ring, I was like, okay, snatch the girl. And she snatched that girl's edges and put her in the bank statement, which just looks so brutal because Charlotte's like the best seller of the bank statement, yes. in my opinion. Because she, she, she's, she's so tall. She's she, so tall and she's so bendable. Yeah, like, she goes all like, the way back. You know what? I really want to see a moment with Charlotte. Remember like when Beth made Melina mm-hmm. like the back of her foot hit the back of her head? I want somebody to do that to Charlotte because I know she could do it. Like, I think Sasha could do it to her. I think, and Char- and Sasha's vicious enough to do that, yeah. so save it for a mania moment, maybe. Sasha made yeah. her kick herself in the damn head. <laughs> you know she was, just <laughs> yeah. like how Beth did it. So I'm just, I'm so excited now to see this feud between Sasha and Charlotte on the main roster, especially so close to the mania, so if we get this one-on-one, I'll be happy, but I feel like there may be a couple more divas included, but I'm, yeah. I'm so stoked for this, and that crowd reaction that is going to show WWE backstage, especially Vince. Like, these girls are on superstar level. Yeah, well, you know, Sa- Sasha Banks and Charlotte are superstars. Becky Lynch is a superstar. I also like how commentary put it over. They're like, oh, here's the third woman of the Divas Revolution that started all of this. Like, I really like that, that they keep they keep putting them over as the, the three Divas that literally come over to save this freaking division. Um <laughs> But let's talk a little predictions. I'm going to go with, um, we were talking a little bit about this in the TPP studios earlier today. And I think it's going to be um, probably a fatal four-way at WrestleMania, including um, Charlotte, of course, Sasha, of course, and Becky, and Paige. Paige is going to be involved. I think Fastlane, we're going to have a three-way, and then the fatal four-way at Mania. The Bellas are out of the question at this point. But um, I definitely feel like Paige is going to be involved some way, somehow, in this whole little storyline. So I think it's going to be a multi-diva title match at some point. But what do you think, Sam? Um, I think at Fastlane, we're going to get uh, um, Sasha and Charlotte, just like one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do think maybe it will like, expand into something. I don't know if it would be a four-way. I could maybe see it as a three-way with Becky still. Okay. Um, but then some sort of decision-making kind of aspect like maybe have a have a, a battle royal at fast lane or, don't, or something i don't know where would that leave Paige just to kind though? of determine the number one contender you gotta think of Paige. but then though. have the three of them so you wouldn't put page in at wrestlemania oh oh no i would put them in it but i think they'd have to work their way in oh like a battle royal on a pre-show or something Mm-hmm. i wouldn't like that i want some story it won't be given to them I want storyline build into like for me if if it ends up to be Sasha and Charlotte as a one on one which I want I want a one on one Charlotte and Sasha they deserve it I want that at WrestleMania with the whole history in NXT build up a cute little program from now until WrestleMania they have perfect timing nothing but time right now they have space and opportunity to make this storyline and make it happen at Mania and these two girls can fucking deliver but I don't think it's gonna happen because Paige is that dark horse what do you think Nick? Nick? Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I had myself on mute. No. Um, I was just saying, I, like, I'd like. i rather have Paige off the WrestleMania card this year, to be no, honest. It ain't gonna happen. It isn't well, gonna Well, why not? Happen. Is she really that influential in the Divas division if at this point? It, if you watch WWE 24, Paige is not being left off. She is absolutely not. There's no way. Guys, she's on total freaking divas they are they're gonna post that show she's one of the biggest divas that they have on the roster they have Paige do all these media outlets Paige is big she's over the crowd loves her she gets cheered everywhere there's no way Paige is gonna sit out wrestlemania if she's healthy no fucking uh. way 
No way. And I, mean, I don't think she should. I do not think she should. I think she should. I deserves. would rather have, like you mentioned, Sasha and Charlotte at Mania, but I'd rather have the triple threat with Becky. Like, now having Sasha kind of come out to think that you're she's going to help Becky, but then just, like, shove her out of the ring, I really feel like they can really build a good, solid three-way feud leading up to WrestleMania with just these three NXT women that started the Divas Revolution. So, Did you see, um like, the end of the after Charlotte and, Charlotte and Sasha, like, it had Sasha going up the ramp, didn't it? And Charlotte was kind of, like, shot from the ring kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And Becky was crying. Yeah, you could see Becky crying in the background. She was just crying her little eyes out. I'm oh, like, maybe oh she gosh, got emotional. Like, like, she just had the match of her career. Yeah. You know? So she probably... It was so nice. That, that I think that was organic, if anything. That was so mm. weird, Oh, my gosh. So yes. genuine. I don't know. See, like, I, feel, I feel like all three of these women are so so organic together when it comes to wrestling. Like they they know storytelling. They know each other so well, and they know how to elevate each other while making each other look good and themselves look good. So yeah, that's yeah. why that's like I don't, I'm not discrediting Paige at all. But I mean, she had her WrestleMania moment last year, and now that these three girls did are she? up, she I don't did. Think she did. I don't think she did. She had her first WrestleMania. Yeah, her she, mom was in the front crowd. She won I the match. I understand that, so. but she didn't have. She didn't. She didn't win the match. But AJ won the match. AJ got the pinfall. She just so happened to be on the team. I do not feel like she had a WrestleMania moment. If anything, I feel like the Bellas had their WrestleMania moment because as sisters, that's a dream. They wanted a tag team together at a WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and I feel that the Bellas got their WrestleMania moment, even though they lost the match. But that's okay, Nikki. But she still went in as champion, and she walked out as champ. But. I definitely think, come on, we cannot discredit Paige. Paige is a great wrestler. She, she loves the business. This is something that she Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Life. Absolutely. I no, think, I, I, I agree with you, James. I think that she'll be involved. I, I, I just think you know what? her way of getting involved needs to be more influential like and have a back like a backstory to it instead of just going oh let's get pages no, on but that's the thing sam see this is a good debate though we got a good one going on but here's <laughs> the thing Paige does have history with them she was in that group with them when it all disbanded so it's easy to put Paige back into into the whole mix have her talk but with how becky. does she go into that now though because her and becky she can have a backstage segment with becky and go to becky and be like see this is why i did not mess with her early and this is why because i always knew that she was selfish there's so many ways that they can go with this to easily insert Paige back into this. Would you have her turn face then? Paige? Well, no, I'd keep yeah. her as she is, a tweener. And, you know, here it is. You know, she's the lone diva or whatever. Just have a what, like, have a woman-a-woman conversation. Women speak. Have them speak backstage, like, out of a respecting. Like, listen, this is why I did this out in the third. And then have Becky think about it. This, And then they could build something and have Paige get involved. Um, for, Have Sasha and Charlotte do their own thing on the side. Have Paige and Becky do their own thing and then have them all collab at once and then have something for Mania. It can happen. I think that's the way they're going to go. I'm booking it. What's the date? I'm doing like, this. It's the 25th of January. January the 25th. I say it's going to be a fatal four way with the four most over divas on the roster right now. You got to think about who's hot right now. Who are they going to plan around until Mania time because they need that time to promo and print out who's going to be on the pictures, the flyers, and it's going to be Becky Lynch, Paige, Sasha, and Charlotte. For the and then he would win. Fatal four way match. They already did a fatal four way match with the Divas on NXT with these with these three Divas. They just had Bailey in there. They're gonna do it with Paige, and it's gonna be freaking phenomenal. And that's but who would win? Good. Who's gonna win? Of course, yeah. I I'm gonna have Sasha. Uh, maybe Sasha. If not Sasha, Charlotte retain and have Sasha win it. Maybe at the next pay per view or the Monday Night Raw the night after. Because I don't know why they never exchange titles like like that. They're very careful how they exchange titles at Mania. So, I genuinely um, think Sasha's going to win it at Mania. I, she deserves it. She would deserve a big moment. Like Bank that. on it. I, <laughs> I would put all my wages on that. Yeah. You know what I would like to see? So we've been talking about all these four women here, but we're kind of leaving out some key members with Sasha, and that's Team Bad. So it's yeah. like... It's kind of interesting to see if Sash is going to be in the spotlight where that leaves Naomi and Tamina. I heard rumors Naomi may be injured. I'm like, I don't know. All these girls are freaking injured. But um, <laughs> it's WWE. It be... They'll just drop her. Like they don't care. Yeah, they're going to be. But like, that's the thing. But that's the thing. I'm wondering if they're going to have Naomi and Tamina get like a little hostile against Sasha and maybe break them up because she's kind of now in the title picture or if they're going to kind of help her. They just her. gave her the new song, though, haven't they? So I can't see Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Listen, I have that on the, one of my side notes is the new theme song for Team Bad. They just got that new theme song and Tamina debuted it on, I think it was Superstars. So, Made it on. If they were to disband Team Bad, I think they should wait until Sasha wins the title. 
honestly, because that's what Naomi wants, and then we can get into a fresh new storyline after WrestleMania. And maybe, Naomi and Sasha. Yes, so I, Naomi, I say yeah. keep Team Bad with Sasha right now. Just keep them with her. They have something to do. It's just too much of a cluster. I feel like that would give both of them something to do at the Mania card as well. Like have a team bag kind of jump in at, and during the match or yeah, get kicked out or take a spot or something, you know? That, that, exactly, because when you leave it for a fatal <clears throat> away match, there's no disqualifications. Right. So they can have they can have this grounds for all of it. For oh, running. I'm booking it now. Now and they have Team Bad down there, and they could have Natty come down, or even be at ringside with either Becky or like I don't know somebody. I don't want no I mean, ringside. I want run-ins. WrestleMania is all about the running. But that's the thing, like a run-in all the way down that big old WrestleMania. That's okay. that's running, he that's saw okay. this all. They can do it. Naomi can run her ass down that ramp. <laughs> Naomi, Quite literally. she will run her ass. She would just see these flashing lights go by, like, oh, there's Naomi, girl. Like, Who's that Naomi or was it Sam? You know what? I think this is going to be the year that we get the best treatment for Divas at WrestleMania. I honestly believe it because they have the talent and these Divas have been proven it. Come on, the second Royal... the sec, What is this? The third biggest pay-per-view of the year, the Royal Rumble. And they had a match like that that the crowd was like, oh my God, all over it. And I feel like um, Triple H... I mean, Vince McMahon is giving Triple H more leeway when it comes to the Divas because I heard that Triple H is dealing with the Divas. I was going to say, yeah. do you know who the writer for the Divas is yet? Well, I don't know who exactly the writer is, but I know the go-to guy is Triple H. That's what I've heard. And he's he's like loving yeah. Sasha at the moment as well. So. For him and Sasha to like return on the same night as well. That's cool. Isn't that cool? That was pretty nice. Yep. But since we talked about Naomi, let's talk about Naomi's new weave. Ooh. Naomi's new weave girl. Naomi looks good with the, the with the new boo. But I will I will I'm gonna try her a bit. It looks a bit familiar. Girl by anybody. <laughs> Girl, buy anyone. <laughs> I, don't know, I haven't cute. seen the weave, so I can't pass comment. I think it's kind of like, is it on like Instagram. Do, What's it yeah, on? it is. It's on her I'm Instagram and her Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, like, I do see the Cameron comparisons, but she kind of made it her own, so it's like I'm yeah. happy with it, and it makes her stand out as well on the main roster with the girls because oh, no girl, yeah. no girl has hair like that. So. I, I, yeah, I want to oh, see her. I, I want to see her standing next to Sasha with the nice, fun, vibrant hair colors together. Yes. So I think it would be cute, especially with the ears and color. stuff. So. And you, you know what? what? If I was a lady, I would have Sasha hair because her hair last night was amazing. Like even during her entrance, when she's walking down, you could hear some girl in the crowd. She's like, "I love your hair." <laughs> <laughs> but Naomi, Naomi switches up her hair so much, so I don't think she'll have it for long. Oh no, no, she'll have a different style by Mania. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're speaking about this like briefly, then you know when you said about some, Sasha came out and someone shouted, "I love your hair." Yeah. The best part about Sasha's entrance when she kind of stood at the top and just threw the rings off. Oh, yeah, when she was just like... <laughs> yeah, I was like, I love that. She's just ripping them off. She was getting she's ready like, I'm ready. Give a dragon. And then when she went up to... <laughs> she went up to ready for a snatcher. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, the Divas... Uh, you know, let's put it all in nutshells. The Divas slayed last night. So. 2016, the year we get justice. Yeah, so I'm so proud of our Divas. Those are our girls. We support them. That's why I always say, even when you guys shade Kelly Kelly, you're like, oh, you can watch that boring ass show, Kelly Kelly show. To me, they're all my girls. I love them all. Rosa too. I love you too, girl. You're all my girls. I'm Charlie. They're my angels. But they piss me <laughs> off. You know what I mean? Like, some of them will piss me the fuck off. You're more Bosley than Charlie. Don't even try it. <laughs> I get, I, you could be Charlie. You got the answer. <laughs> I don't want to be Charlie. I don't I be Bosley. I'll be the Bernie Mac <laughs> Bosley. Because I feel like I'm more like authentic. I'm like, ah! You know what I mean? But um, the Divas just been slain. So shout out to all the Divas. You guys did a great mm-hmm. job. And you see, like, it doesn't take, like, they didn't give us, like, a random six Diva tag match at a Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? Like, there's actually some story. And they got a pop. They got reaction. So come on, WWE. Just keep yeah. going with this. Keep it was nice to have a title match at the Rumble because so nice. last year did we get the Bellas versus Paige and Natty? Random, yeah. Yeah, it was random. That made no sense. <sighs> but let's, but let's move on yes. to the meat and potatoes. Yes. The Royal Rumble itself. Before we get into this, by the way, did you see Lillian Garcia trying to do the intro? Oh my gosh, she was just drowning. How bad was that? I didn't. I didn't hear it. I went outside. What she said. She was starting off, and she was like, "It's um now time <laughs> for um the Royal Rumble match." I was like, "She has not. She maybe she hasn't done this in a while." <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, um, "What?" It, she said, "Every every ninety 
Uh, yeah, I'll be 90 seconds. Another superstar. Oh my gosh, she actually said that. Or, she did. She kept stumbling. She stumbled. Oh I don't know. You know, it happens. She's human. I don't know. Maybe she's like, <laughs> Lily, I don't know. Maybe, you know, sometimes you never know. She's a woman at a particular age. You never know. Something made her. <laughs> I don't know. Since she fell with the rumble. She must have had a rumble of her own in her stomach. Who knows? It just threw her off. But all Since I know, she took that tumble on the ramp, she's never been the same. You no, know, I love Lily. And I think she you know did what? She had a hot flash. I'll give it to her. Yeah, she just, I was just like, Eden, grab that mic, girl. Grab the mic, Eden. Grab Eden's, uh, by the way, Eden's announcing skills was amazing, despite like the Eden. fact that uh, Michael Cole got wrong at the beginning. Why? What did he say about Eden? At the very beginning of the first match with um, Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose, and he's like, I'm going to hand you over to Lillian Garcia, and then Eden starts talking. <laughs> and then as soon as the match started, he went, I'm sorry, that was Eden Styles, not Lillian Garcia. <laughs> I love Eden, and Eden's another girl that gets a lot, a lot of slack. Like people, are like I don't really hate her voice. I know Nick's one of the people that doesn't like. <laughs> yeah, you call I've me always been Eden. Sorry, I called you out, bitch. I damn right did. Because I think it's like I think at this point it's kind of unfair. This girl's been doing it for what three years now. She's been on the main roster, and I don't think she's bad. She does not bother me. Another one, JoJo. Oh, JoJo! I wanted to make oh, a mention of um, beautiful man making fun of her. <laughs> Can I just say? She is probably the most beautiful diva they have on the roster right now. With that, I don't know, whoever did her makeup, whoever sat her down and beat her face up and did her hair, so she looked beautiful on the Royal Rumble. No wonder Vince walked up, he's like, Jow, Jow, you know, like she looked so freaking good. I, 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 that's the best I've seen JoJo. I love when he got down to her level and then <laughs> Stephanie's like, Oh, dad, don't make fun of JoJo. <laughs> I, I love when her and Stephanie had the interactions a couple of people. I think it was SummerSlam or something like that, I believe. Oh, shit! These bitches. 